Hey guys, so we're going back to the Great Ace Attorney 2. Let's carry on where we left off. We barely managed to survive an unprovoked dog attack over at Fresno Street, but thankfully, Susato's good for more than just her takedown. She's also a brilliant rescuer. She dragged us all the way back here to our office. And who else is here but Herlock Sholmes, the man potentially responsible for stealing some important autopsy notes from the coroner's office, specifically that of Clint Van Zeek. So... Here's hoping he's got an idea of where they may be, because Iris was also acting shifty at the time, too. Perhaps she might uh, have an inkling as well. For now, let's converse what to do. No, I don't think we need to know what to do here. There's only one thing that's kind of sticking out right now, and it's this handsome gentleman here. Uh, thank you for your concern, Mr. Sholmes, but please don't smoke in my office. Thank you very much. My dear fellow, think nothing of it. I must say I was quite startled when I heard that you'd been attacked by a dog. For a moment, I feared that infamous murderer of so many had come back from the dead. Maybe he was reincarnated as Toby, I don't know. Maybe he was trying to tell me something. You mean, the professor? Fortunately, I see your prized throat is unscathed. Yeah, it, it came close though. That stiff, turned up collar of yours obviously afforded some welcome protection. Was I that close to death? Oh god. All, all I really remember is the dog licking my face over and over and over again, really. There was no danger of any time paradox. Well, if you wish to avoid such troubles in the future, a little mustard spread on the cheeks should do the trick. Uh, which cheeks are we talking about here? I should think that would balance the sweetness of your bandage rather splendidly. My bandage? Oh, okay. Um... Right, well, I guess we're just going to converse about what to do. Are you alright, Mr. Nahude? It's rather unusual to find ourselves here in the middle of our investigations. It's... Uh, it's just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry. As long as you continue to investigate thoroughly, you won't go far wrong. Oh, yes, of course. I must get back to work as soon as possible. Alright, well... Let's, uh, let's move out. See where we need to go next. Uh, anything sticking out? Perhaps we need to go visit Van Zeeks again? Everything kind of seems done. Apparently we forgot something this morning. Let's go to the prison. Van Zeeks? Where is he? Is he hiding under the bed? God. Alright, fine. Let's keep looking. All we had to do was head downstairs, what do you know? Second November, Shums is sweet. Iris? What in the hell is going on here? Professor Mikotoba? Holy shit, he's drunk off his balls! What on earth is going on in here? Am I having a bad dream? Ah, no. It's an old German folk song. Rather a fine rendition, I think. That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris? <laughs> Iris? What's the matter? Oh, now you're pouting. Okay, I see how it is. You bail on us over at the freaking coroner's office and then you don't tell us what's going on with Susato's father who's diligently disguised <laughs> under a seti, a mask, and his hat. Um, who's that sprawling... I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there. Uh, Iris, face up at this point, okay? <laughs> Make it easy on yourself, Iris. Uh, is she even listening? Excuse me, sir. I do apologize for troubling you whilst you're singing so merrily, but... Would you be so kind enough to explain the situation? He's the one singing? Well, that worked. He is alive, right? You're not draping that city over a gunshot wound or anything. A crooning gentleman and a mute young girl. A rather tantalizing juxtaposition. And one that appears to have incited the gods of deduction within me to find their voices too. Are we seriously dancing right now? <laughs> uh, Mr. Sholmes, do you mean... Iris, you can't escape my boogie. The strains of reasoning within me are playing now as a delightful duet. 
One melody sings of a reunion full of nostalgia. Whilst the other is a morose theme about the great secret you're trying so desperately to conceal, Iris. She's turned as white as a sheet. So as usual, you've instantly seen to the very heart of the matter. Yeah, me too, you know. And by the time my own brief performance is over, I'm sure this gentleman's song will reach its finale. So then, to music land, where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. Pray do enjoy Herlock Holmes' latest logic and reasoning spectacular. I don't think he can, he's fast asleep. The great deduction, here we go again. Goodness me. Man's identity. <laughs> We're really going through this. Firstly, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly he's, ge he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the Germanic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand when asked to desist. Yes, I can see. The lip syncing is really good in this game. So, why is the man here at all and in such apparently high spirits? The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. Did you feed him some sort of anesthetic? The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the herbal tea. Not quite. You obviously offered our German guest a cup of your latest herbal blend. The tea's delectable flavor has made this man's spirit soar and resulted in this joyful ditty tumbling incessantly from his lips. <laughs> I eagerly await something in the favor of myself, that I may join the fellow in a state of elation. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see you draped over him collapsed as well, Sherms. Mm -hmm. Now, to the next question. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of the city? Don't tell me you're gonna, you're gonna say, like, Professor Harebrain because he's German or something. As it happens, a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particularly delicate case. It required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that, may ha that might have proved problematic. In order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gottstrich Sigismund von Ormstein. <laughs> wow. He was that Dark Souls boss, the King of Germany. If my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question. That mask belongs to the King of Germany. The King of Germany is unconscious in your suite. Good God. It would appear that His Majesty remembers the fine service I afforded him, and has decided to show his face again, mask and all, in order to express his gratitude. A well-mannered monarch indeed. Wouldn't you agree, my dear fellow? Uh, I'd say that's that's very ill-mannered, actually. So the identity of this masked visitor is in fact my former client, the King of Germany. Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonders of the Great Exhibition. I see. Well, his daughter is here, in fact, right in front of his eyes. His half-lidded, covered eyes. Girls' silence is our second topic. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. Come on, spill the beans, but your apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that knapsack. A five pound note, I believe. I must say, as your compatriot, I'm deeply saddened. I need that for rent. <laughs> it will appear that you've allowed yourself to be bribed into silence by his royal highness. Earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the king's secret. Hmm. And now, the final piece of the puzzle. What is this secret you strive to hide with your silence, Iris? Ah yes, we need only follow that brief, involuntary twitch of your eyes to find the answer. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. Oh, it's a broken uh, handle. My favorite coffee cup, in fact. Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup. It appears that his high-spirited highness broke it in the midst of his hijinks. Which leads us to the sad truth. 
my favorite coffee cup has been broken by the King of Germany. And Iris, you tried to conceal it from me. Oh no. Truly tragic. I shall have a bill sent via governmental channels to the German royal family for its replacement. But you can never truly replace such a sentimental ornament. Chums, I understand. I hate things breaking too, especially if I care about it so much. To hide the coffee cup was the reason for her silence. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this painful puzzle. <laughs> God, that's depression incarnate right there. Well, I'm glad we were dancing to this tune, of all things. With your silence as well, the fellow's jovial warbling rather rings in the ears, does it not? <sighs> I need to take a big breath for that sigh. Um, Mr. Shames, I must say something does rather trouble me. I didn't realize my father looked like the King of Germany. Pray, Mr. Sato, do tell. His Royal Highness doesn't appear to have moved a muscle since we arrived. Ah, and you haven't said a word either, Iris. <laughs> Mr. Shams has it all right. You might as well own up to it now. Okay, fine. Be like that. God, it's got all bratty all of a sudden. Your reasoning isn't entirely without substance, I must admit. And uh, one other thing, Mr. Shams. Yet another grievance, Mr. Naruto. Surely not. Well, I actually read the story of that case recently. The one you were just describing. And according to that, at least, it wasn't the king of Germany. It was the king of Bohemia. <laughs> Goodness, was it? Oh no, we're gonna have to redo this entire dance. Yes, that's quite true. Master Gotts, the prince, testified to that in court. That's right. In his words, I've come to see the great exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. I would ask you to keep that minor error to yourselves. It could easily become quite a scandal. I believe, Mr. Narahedo, that it's our turn now to make some corrections to a number of minor errors that may have slipped in. Oh yeah, very minor. Yes, even Mr. Sholmes is willing to admit he might be slightly wide of the mark this time. Although it's clear that Iris is definitely hiding something. She's definitely a minor error at this point. <laughs> we need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. But one truth is incontrovertible. My favorite coffee cup is no more. So, shall we embark again? On a joint presentation of Herlock Holmes' logic and reasoning spectacular. Alright. As long as you're not moody throughout because of your coffee cup. Course correction. Let's do it. Alright. Back to the man's identity. The king of Germany. Which is... Impossible. It'd have to be at least the king of Bohemia. Firstly, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the Germanic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand when asked to desist, so why is the man here at all and in such apparently high spirits? The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the herbal tea. Wrong. So, what, it's some mix of herbs that gives you the urge to sing? Goodness, I should like to try some. I'd like to hear your singing, but this man... Just how long does he intend to keep up with that tune, do you suppose? As I said, he's been stock still the entire time, and if you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. Oh, shit, really? God, I was really squinting for that one. Oh, so I'm not sure what's actually responsible for the spirited singing. But I suspect the answer lies at the end of Iris's gaze. Okay, so we just need to find, what, the radio? Or the record player in this case? The gramophone! Wait, this is a gramophone still rarely seen in our own country. <laughs> God. The sound certainly appears to be coming from the horn. God, I'm gonna get copyrighted for this. But machines singing! That, that, that can't be right! Science and technology are changing the world rapidly, Mr. Narode. What's right is changing too. Ugh, it's too much for my brain. But at least we found our answer. 
Okay, cool. Lovely. Present it. The gramophone. The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the gramophone. Indeed, for no well-bred gentleman would break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all. In fact, it would appear that the fellow is unconscious. What? No. There we go. Oh, the music seems to have stopped now. Damn machines. When are they going to take over? Today's singing is tomorrow's annihilation. I ask you, Mr. Derrida. Yes? Why would I have purchased a recording of that gibberish? How should I know? <laughs> well, never mind. On with the deduction. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of the city? Iris? You're running out of time. As it happens, a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged with my services in solving a particularly delicate case. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. In, other, in order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. The gentleman's name was Wilhelm Gottstrich Sigismund von Ormstein. The King of Germany. If my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question that mask belongs to the King of Germany. Although we've already established that it was actually the King of Bohemia. It seems Mr. Sholmes intends to persist with his Germany theory for some reason. Come to think of it, the young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Master Gotts? The boy whom you had in tears? Don't remind me. Or anyone else. Do you suppose all members of the aristocracy of mainland Europe wear masks? I'm sure they do. Well, well, probably, anyway. The point is, that mask doesn't belong to any king. No, that's right, as we well know. Because we can identify the true owner of this mask. We certainly can. Where is this handsome mug? There it is. Kazuma Sogi. <laughs> it's Kazuma, obviously. He's chilling on our couch. Yes, there can be no question that mask belongs to Kazuma Sogi. In other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable. Oh well, a blatant confession. Only you could try to make that sound positive. Kazuma's mask had been languishing on this metal chest for several days. But that doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. It's, it's possessed him. What is this, lethal company? But it is now a simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. After all, the gentleman is unconscious. So, remove the mask. We need only excuse ourselves in advance. Gently lift the mask and peer beneath it. Sorry, Susato. Uh, I don't believe it. Ah! F -f -f Father? I'm afraid, Miss Susato, you must be mistaken. No, I think not, Mr. Sholmes. Then it would appear our logic and reasoning has once again revealed the truth. Our logic? <laughs> this mysterious visitor... ...is my unconscious father, Eugene Mikotoba. I like how she's delivering it at the end there. Oh, Iris. Logic and reasoning. We're just looking and seeing. <laughs> oh my god. That is perfect conclusion. For topic one, let's move on. Girls silence to hide the coffee cup. Is that really true? But she leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. But your apparently inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reasoning for your muteness is concealed inside that knapsack. I wonder if this is related to her quick escape from the coroner's office, the mortuary, right? So that's a five pound note poking out from Iris's knapsack, is it? Oh dear, I can't be sure. Most money that we encounter is caught in coin form. I know. I'm not even sure if we've seen any banknotes here in Britain at all, have we? But anyway, Father would never have paid money for Iris's silence. He certainly seems like the silent type himself, though, judging by his present state. There must be some other reason for Iris's silence, I suppose. 
Perhaps what Iris is trying to so hard not to give away with her eyes is something entirely different. Okay, well, what is she hiding? What could she be concealing? What is Iris really looking at? Uh, the metal chest? It's open, it seems. This metal chest? It contains important documents, doesn't it? Yes, details of all the cases Mr. Sholmes has worked on over the years. Written up by Iris' father, if I'm remembering correctly. Iris insists that the chest is kept locked at all times. She's never once shown me inside. Well, its contents are invaluable to her, I suppose. And entirely irreplaceable. I wonder if the mention of her father is what drew her to open the chest. But look at it now. The catch is unlocked for once. Uh, so it is. That's hard to ignore. Very. I've never seen that chest unlocked before in all the time we've been staying here at Baker Street. Okay, well, I guess we're all good to present it. Didn't get updated to unlocked middle chest. There we go. <sighs> yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that metal chest. An excellent observation. For upon closer inspe inspection, there is something different about the chest's appearance. It's kept locked at all times, yet now the catch is open. <laughs> Evidently, this is something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. <laughs> but it's a simple enough matter to incite you to speak, I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest for more seeing and saying. Here we go. <laughs> no! Totally don't! Oh god! Oh! Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes, honey! <laughs> oh, God, well, he joined him. He's dead. God. All right. Uh, we got to get back to Japan pronto. Sasato, get my things upstairs. Tell Kazuma we're sorry. We're not going to be able to make it to court tomorrow. Uh, we'll get on the ship, hopefully. No one's gonna stop us before we board. Never. D oh, Hurley. I told you not to open it. Ah. Uh, so you found your voice now, Iris. Uh. In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is... <laughs> This is somewhat different to the usual dance of deduction you perform with Mr. Sholmes, isn't it? Yeah, he's not dancing anymore, he's fucking dead. <laughs> well, he's left me alone in the ballroom floor, so I'm going to have to dance to the next this next part solo. Sorry, Sasato, you're not invited. Anyway, I need to get to the bottom of this for my own peace of mind. Now then, Iris isn't usually the silent type, so... You mean you don't actually know the answer yet? Despite that knowing point of the finger before. It's called a bluff, Miss Sasato. Sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh. Well, if you say so, I think we'd better examine Iris more closely and try to rescue the, the situation then. Why couldn't Iris open her mouth the whole time? I feel like she's got something in it, and it kind of came out as soon as, uh, yeah. As soon as she spat out her warning to Sherlock Ho or Herlock Sholmes. The key? Let's take a look. That's a key she's holding, look. I'm sure that wasn't in her hands before, was it? No, you're quite right. It appeared as if by magic. That's strange. A big old iron key. Where did it materialize from? Take that! There it is. You literally locked your mouth shut. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back. Huh. But Mr. Shoves was thrown into the air before. Yeah, right there. Just before you called out to try to stop him, you slipped something out of your mouth. That something is the key now in your hands. No doubt the key to the chest. You're so... You're so clever, Rene. Uh, you know. I try. So now it becomes clear. Thanks to Mr. Shum's graphic demonstration. We can well imagine what happened here. But... Professor Mikotoba also opened that middle chest, only to be punched into the air from his groin and land sprawled on the city. 
But wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. What about the stylish scarf? And the cup of tea? And above all, why would he be wearing Kazuma Sama's mask? Well, for those curious details, I can think of only one explanation. She was trying to disguise who was knocked out and how he got knocked out. Well, an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. Isn't that right, Iris? <laughs> Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. When Professor Mikotoba opened the chest, completely unaware of what awaited him inside. The mask was flung into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when it fell back down. Who opens a chest like this? There's like five things on this. Surely you'd swipe them off before you left the lid. And the teacup's journey through the air ended when it caught on the unconscious professor's finger. That is most impressive. You mean to say that the stylish, the stylish scarf is actually just a tablecloth? This is the great detective's office after all. Play some miraculous deductions. Yep, I guess we're not doing it solo after all. Would you expect anything less? Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as you said. Brilliant, Rune. Oh, now you're giving me that innocent smile? Thus concludes Rinosuke Narahodo's great deduction. Of this punchy puzzle. <laughs> That's right. I own this now. So then, why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for us all? Objection! Whoa! What? You sounded like Cosmo just then. Are you gonna rip off your mask? An admirable performance, Mr. Naruto. But in the final act of the show there, you rather missed everything of importance. What did I miss? M Mr. Sholmes, if you would cast your mind back to my earlier deduction, how are you alive? Iris, clearly you're hiding a great secret. Uh, she is? From the look on her face, ah, oh, sneaky. That's why she gave me that big old grin. She wanted me to think that I'd actually completed the dance. It's like when you clap at the end of a musical performance only because they had a brief pause and they're actually still playing. Mr. Sholmes must be right. Whatever that great secret is, the cat isn't out of the bag yet. So I put it to you again. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. God, it's not your coffee cup. It really is a shame about Mr. Shames' cup. It must have been smashed when Professor Mikotoba opened the chest. Oh dear, so many things seem to have been broken here. But now that the deduction has taken a different direction, Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, her great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to work here one final time then. What secret is Iris trying to hide? Is it in her knapsack? Is it somewhere else in this room? Could it be underneath? There it is. She picked up that plate for a reason. Case file. Uh, look! There! There seem to be more papers there. Is Iris trying to hide them underneath the tray? Sorry, the tray, not the plate. The, the insignia, Mr. Narhide. It's an official Scotland Yard document. What? But why would Iris have... We must ask her. Uh, official Scotland Yard document? Present. You are trying to abscond with that case file. Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective. Hey, nay. Alright. We visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today. And Dr. Gorey informed us that the autopsy report of Clint Van Zeeks had gone missing. Clint Van Zeeks. Hmm, yes, I do seem to recall. That some years ago, I asked to see the report in question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? Hmm, I, I... You mean, it was you, Iris? So those papers you have there are... I'm sorry. It is indeed why you ran away. Forgive me! Oh god, she's sobbing! We made a child cry, but we got the truth, so there's that. To hide the case file. 
So. <sighs> Elementary. Iris. Well, in truth, I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby trapped chest. But it caught me completely off guard. I was very nearly the late consulting Detective Herlock Holmes. <sighs> I'm sorry, Hurley. So you mean this autopsy report really is. Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I'd been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it, I knew it was Daddy's. The, the writing? Your father's writing? What do you really mean? Iris, it must be something that's hard for her to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. Mr. Shums, what is it? We're in a, we're having a moment here. Oh yeah, we should probably make sure he's okay. I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the city has been somewhat forgotten. Ah, uh, the father. <laughs> Perhaps we should find our guest somewhere more peaceful to rest. <laughs> Mr. Nahode. Yes. Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? We must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, uh, yes, of course. I'll help you carry him up. So will I. No, no, I can manage alone, thank you. You have tea to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris's brew to stew. Of course. Because there's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging him upstairs like a truck. <laughs> I wonder. Perhaps that was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Sholmes is making himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk more freely. Damn. He actually is considerate after all. We must use this opportunity to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. Iris, come on. Your daddy. Who is he? And what does he do? Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I told you before, didn't I? That daddy used to be Hurley's partner. Yes, and that notes about all the cases they solved together are kept inside that metal chest. That's right, Hurley told me, you see. He said that daddy's somewhere far away now, so we can't meet. It's one way of describing it. Imagine, though, it's uh, a different John H. Wilson, even. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what Daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl of your age. I read that Daddy was a professor of medical science, so studied, so I studied and took my degree too. Well, that's only natural, I suppose, for uh, a girl of your age getting your degree. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. <laughs> but there was one thing that I could never find out. Daddy's name. Uh, his name wasn't anywhere on the, any of the notes that he'd made about his work with Hurley. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? When you saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out. Is that right? Yes. So it was the handwriting in the report that caught her eye. I see. Okay. The autopsy report. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know that handwriting, I thought to myself. Because it was the same as the writing you'd seen on your father's case notes. Exactly. I was desperate to compare the two properly. I needed to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that was the first and last time we'd be allowed to even look at it there. So you decided to steal it. When I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I'd, I had here, there was no doubt. The handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. 
and the signature of the coroner at the bottom of the autopsy report read Dr. John H. Wilson. So that's how I finally found out. I learned Daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then, I've called myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories all about Daddy's exciting times with Hurley. I decided there and then that I'd write The Adventures of Herlock Shames. Oh, Iris, I had no idea the stories had quite such a deep personal significance for you. I wonder then, is she actually a Wilson? Maybe she's something else. Maybe we're, uh, we've misconstrued who her father really is because Mikotoba has, uh, pretty confidently, confidently said that Dr. John H. Wilson wasn't, in fact, Herlock Sherms' partner. So, hmm. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe there's a scandal somewhere. See why the autopsy report was so important to her now. And why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. Must apologize, Iris. <laughs> That's what happens when there's no nameplate. God. This is really all my fault. Helly? I wonder if, uh. Herlock Shums knows who her father really is and just doesn't want to tell her. Maybe he's somewhere around. Maybe it's Van Zeeks. <laughs> maybe he had an illegitimate daughter. Or maybe it's the judges. I mean, I don't know anyone who's got that hair color. Right? I made a promise, you see. That until the time was right, I'd keep the details about your father a secret. I know. I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to Dr. Gory and apologize, I promise. Yes. We'll go together, I think. Then, let me look after it for you until we get there. Clint's autopsy report has been entered into the court record at long last. The autopsy report of the final victim of the infamous Professor. The report was authored by Dr. John H. Wilson. Hmm. Killed by Asashin. Well, you know we're going to take a look at it real quick. Autopsy we'll report, coroner John H. Wilson, victim, name, Clint Van Zeeks, male, 33, British, time of death, 31st May, between 9 p.m. and midnight. Observations, death from a single stab wound to the heart, other superficial external wounds, indicative of a jewel. Additional notes, recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring fingers of the right hand, but no document and corresponding ink was found. Autopsy findings, vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy, credit to Inspector Gregson for petitioning so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. And that's the signature, John H. Wilson. Okay, so vital evidence was recovered from the victim's stomach. This is the vital evidence that pointed to uh, Genshin Asogi being the, the murderer. Interesting. I wonder why Gregson petitioned so doggedly for the autopsy procedure. Uh, scarlet ink stains visible on the little ring fingers. Maybe the document was what we now know to be the Asogi papers. Could be. I wonder who he was dueling. Alright. I must go and water my herbs, I think. I'll see you all later. Poor Iris. She must be feeling awful. I thought she was going to return the autopsy report to Dr. Gory, but that's okay. I know Mr. Sholmes is here for her, but still. Ah! What? Huh. How? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Sholmes? Mr. Sholmes? Oh, dear me. So, you've noticed, I see. But that... that would mean... What on earth's the matter, Mr. Sato? You've turned as white as a sheet. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Narahide. The one from ten years ago. The writing. Isn't Dr. Wilson's at all? Huh? W what do you mean? How could you possibly know that? Because! I know this writing very well. This writing? It's my father's! Oh my god. What? Professor Mikotobas? Indeed. It's true. And now you know. 
my dear fellows. <laughs> oh god! What a twist! What the heck? No. I don't know anything. Your partner? Was Professor Mikotoba? What on earth does all of this mean, Mr. Shums? Because the idea that's slowly forming in my mind, it's just too extraordinary to believe. Please, you have to explain. <laughs> and we got the hype music playing, the autopsy writing. So, this autopsy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotoba then? But that makes no sense, it's not possible, surely. That would explain why it was only like a one and done. Not possible. My dear fellow, pray take a deep breath and think again. Yes, you're right. In some ways, it actually makes a great deal of sense. It... it does? <laughs> Ten years ago is when Father returned to Japan after his extended study tour in Britain. Oh my god, Iris is your sister! <laughs> no, I know it's not that. Simple, is it? <laughs> and prior to his return, where was Mr... where was Dr. Demikotoba engaged? Of course. He was an assistant in Dr. Wilson's laboratory, learning about forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the dissection work, making detailed notes, which would be assembled into the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put his signature on the document. In other words, the only writing of Dr. Wilson's in the report would be his signature at the end. I see. So Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean? She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by Dr. John H. Wilson. Which is very understandable, of course. What a complicated situation. The details of Clint's autopsy report has been updated in the court record. It's signed by Dr. John H. Wilson, who carried out the procedure, though Professor Mikotoba actually penned the report. Interesting, your partner! Thinking about it, most of what we know about you, Mr. Sholmes, comes from the published stories of your exploits. Yes, the adventures of Herlock Shames. Written by Iris. And we really have no way of knowing what's fact and what's fiction. Most troubling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So what about the supposed partner of yours? Did he really exist or not? Ah, you've come straight to the point, I see. And please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris explained it in one of her installments. He was a trusted comrade, and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam. Absolutely. So, where's your partner now? We rarely meet. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. Oh my god. I was not expecting this, holy shit. But if this autopsy report and the records of all your cases were penned by the same hand, and if the autopsy report was written, though not signed by your famous partner, there would be only one logical conclusion. I'm gonna do a big dance now. Pray impress me. Your partner would have ha would have to be Yujin Mikotoba. In other words, Miss Susato's father. Upon my word, Mr. Narode. Yes? You are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasp the art of deduction. You, you mean to say... Allow me to introduce you... To my great friend and partner. Mikotoba. <laughs> oh my god! That's so cool! He's even, like, got the look. I should've... Uh, Professor Mikotoba? <laughs> Shomes and Mikotoba. Does... Does this mean that you're the real Dr. Wilson? No, 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 my dear, I'm still my old self. Yuji Mikotoba, your father! Uh, of, of course. <laughs> This is obviously too much for Susato-san to take in. I must say, though, how my old friend has attained worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Uh, 
pray remind me. When was it again, Mikotoba? Sixteen years ago, Sholmes. Ah, yes, quite. Sixteen years ago. I just arrived from Japan with Seishiro and Genshin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital. Some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. But rents are devilishly high in that particular area. That's right. So I decided I needed someone to share lodgings in the expense. And was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sholmes, who found himself in a similar situation. I was a callow fellow back then. A mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I see. Uh, Sholmes, how old are you? Perchance? 34. 16 years ago, you would have been... <laughs> 18! Wow. Okay. Scary. Uh, Mikitoba. Obviously a bit older. I was working at the hospital's chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for a little game. And the situation of our cohabitation led us to us led to us pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe it was a mere six years. We had a great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous of cases presented itself. The case with which you've become rather familiar yourselves. The Professor Killings. After the trial, Seishiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising given the circumstances. So there you have it. And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusty chronicler remain in that metal chest. This is just amazing! Professor Mikitoba really is Mr. Sholmes' famous partner! <laughs> Susato, she's gonna take him down. Father? Uh-oh. Goodness, my dear, what a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you were the great detective's great partner. Why does it sound so rehearsed? <laughs> like she's been going over it in her mind while we were talking. But nevertheless... There's another mystery that I really must ask you to explain now. Uh, and that is... You know very well what it is. The unresolved matter of Iris's father. Uh, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that one. <laughs> I should have seen this coming, I suppose. Well, Iris's father? Iris told us that all the notes about the great detective's adventures are that, that are in that metal chest were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Sholmes? That is indeed what I told young Iris. <laughs> but if you're Mr. Sholmes' partner, Father, and you wrote all those case notes, then Iris's father must be you. Uh... Upon my word, Miss Susato. You are coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. <laughs> what a way to reveal that. You finally grasp the art of deduction. Uh, what? What you've always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago, and that you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour of Britain, and I've always accepted that. But, all this about Iris... Oh, there it is. Susato-san's ice-cold stare, oh my god. This is frightening, like, god. No, no, hold on a minute. It, it was very complicated. I mean, it's, it's really not what you think. Then perhaps you'd like to explain exactly what it is. Oh, shit. There it is. Now the eyes go from ice cold to red hot just before she... No, really. You've, you've got the wrong end of the stick. Sh Shobes, say something, man. I take it he died. That's quite enough, my fair fury fellows. He's going to wish he died to get to that boxing glove in the, in the middle chest. Mr. Shobes, when did he get all dressed up? Whilst well, I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past... Mikotoba and I have an urgent matter that requires an ex a short excursion. But it's very late, Mr. Sholmes. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So, get your coat, Mikotoba. The game is afoot. Oh. Oh, yeah. B but, Sholmes, I really must give Susato a full explanation, I think. Later, my dear fellow, later. My carriage awaits downstairs already. Okay. You haven't changed one iota, have you? I mean, really. 
I visit our home after ten long years, and when I open that chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. <laughs> and as if that wasn't enough, when I eventually regain consciousness, I'm plunged straight into all this. Father, please. Go with Mr. Shames now, before I toss you into the fireplace and you're nothing but ash. What? <laughs> I have no doubt that whatever happened, you were acting in everyone's best interests. I trust you. Completely. I get I get Susato taken down for less. This is some bullshit. Susato. I'm sending the great detective and his great partner off on renewed adventures together. That's more than I could have hoped for in my wildest dreams. Very well then. We'll speak again later. So... I believe your own work is done for the day. I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. Yes, Narahodo. Good luck in battle. And in reaching a decision. A decision? About whether to go back to Japan, I suppose. How am I meant to do that when so much has happened today? God, you too. So much happened that day that I barely <laughs> knew what to do with myself. Right? It would only be later that I'd come to realize how amidst the chaos I'd unleashed were all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth. Really now? And that all the turmoil was necessary to give me the resolve to see everything through. Well, name drop. Title drop. Oh my god. The game truly... What? End? You kidding me? The end of the chapter, really? I was about to say the game is afoot.